as language learners, our goal is not to avoid mistakes. Making mistakes is normal and necessary. What's more, studies have shown that sometimes learners go through a period of making more mistakes as they become more fluent in a language. So don't judge yourself for what you think are basic mistakes. For instance, a very common type of error is subject-verb agreement, as in she don't like studying. Here the subject is she, which is the third person singular. The correct conjugation is doesn't, she doesn't like studying. Research has shown that subject-verb agreement with the third person singular in the present tense is a late acquired skill. Although even beginners know that the third person singular in the present tense has a different ending, it takes a long time for this conjugation to become automatic. Indeed, it is only at C1, that is, at an advanced level, that learners consistently conjugate it correctly. So if you keep getting it wrong, it doesn't mean that you're stupid, it may just be a question of time. Still, we do want to notice our mistakes. If you notice something, it means you become aware of it, you realize it's there, you see it. And effective, successful language learners are very good at noticing. The good news is that there are tools to help you with this process. Today we're going to be looking at two proofreading tools, namely Google Docs and Grammarly, to notice mistakes when writing. Proofreading is the process of revising a text to make sure it doesn't contain any mistakes. Before handing in a written assignment, always proofread it. When writing a text in Google Docs, you can take advantage of the built-in spelling and grammar checker. If the default language is set to another language, first go to File and Language, and then select the variety of English. Here we'll be working with British English, United Kingdom. Then go to Tools, Spelling and Grammar, Show Spelling Suggestions, and Show Grammar Suggestions. Google Docs will then underline spelling and grammar mistakes it detects. You can see the squiggly blue lines. By clicking on the word or chunk, you will see the recommended correction. For instance, you don't dream becoming something, you dream of becoming something. Here, they recommend a person, music is the thing, the person who plays it is a musician, so goes to, you make someone go, you don't make someone to go, and so on. Grammarly works in a similar way, this is go to grammarly.com and click on either New or Upload. Here I've copied the same text by clicking on New and as we can see Grammarly has spotted most of the same mistakes as Google Docs although it has missed one mistake for instance down here, it's should be it at a contraction of it's, I, uh, it is, so it should be I, I, T apostrophe S. So it's missed that very obvious mistake. And another mistake, if we look down here, premium. So you can be a premium member. And for example, the mistake of syntax that's corrected by Google Docs. Here will only be explained to you, the corrected version will only be available to you if you have a premium account. Now, the advantage of Grammarly is that it provides more information on the type of mistake you've made. 
simply click on learn more. So let's take a look at the first mistake, dreams. So here we have the explanation. It appears that there is a missing preposition after the word dreams. Consider adding the preposition. And if you click on learn more, we have this whole explanation with further examples of the concept of dependent prepositions. Now, you can also use Grammarly within a Google Doc by installing the Grammarly extension for your browser, such as Chrome or Safari. So let's take a look back to the original Google Doc. Up here, we have the Grammarly beta extension. I'm turning it on. takes a moment to load. And it's thinking. And voila! Here we have pretty much, as I said before, most of the same mistakes, although a couple are missing. So again, here, if you click on the mistake, you get a, cor a suggested correction, and it says see more in Grammarly, and then you get the same information as before and you can get more information about the type of mistake you made and other examples. Finally, I recommend that you always keep a copy of your first draft, that is your first uncorrected version, so that you and your teacher can go back and see which mistakes you tend to make and whether you keep making the same ones. Thanks for watching.